all do face uh, this challenge in our lives. I mean, even if we do not end up becoming the president of the country mm -hmm. or even a CEO of an organization, we are still leaders yes. when it comes to our daily life as well, because uh, we are bound to lead our families, we are bound to lead our communities, our societies. And if it comes to uh, the professional environment, obviously we have certain leadership positions. So what I'm trying to, uh, I'll be trying to do today is, is just to give a refresher and overview regarding what uh, leadership competencies or skills we need to learn. And I would love to hear the feedback uh, of the participants. You can always use the chat box to send me messages, send me questions or any opinion that comes across your mind because obviously sharing of experience is something really wonderful. So I've been a teacher of uh, leadership for uh, around two decades now and uh, I believe that all of us, we need to be uh, vigilant, we need to be focused on developing our leadership skills. So I'm hopeful that today's session is going to give you an idea that uh, what skills uh, or competencies would you want to work on. So quickly moving towards the uh, objectives of the session, uh, I am going to talk about a bit about self-leadership, but since we have talked about it earlier in our classes, so you're going to talk about the bad side of uh, leadership as well and how to become a great leader from an average or a good leader. But the most important thing is that the rules of the session are five R's. Recall, relate, remember, review, and most importantly, relax. <laughs> because all these things, all these ideas are going to uh, be relevant to your regular life, regardless of what context are you in, even if you are a student or a professional, or even just looking to make a mark in the world, it's going to help you. So what I want you to do is, uh, in the start of the session, we are going to do an icebreaker. This is the activity that I really love because at the start of the session, I would like to engage with the audience. What I want you to do is use the chat box, and write down in very simple and short uh, words or lines, write down your top hope and your top fear. Uh, it's some. It's just to break the ice, no context involved in this, but uh, use the chat box and write down, think about uh, your hope. What do you hope from your life? What is your topmost hope? What do you want to have? And do mention your top fear as well. I mean, what is stopping you because it is a part of recalling that what we have to do. So better to uh, spend like 20, 30 seconds on this. So let us, uh, I'm just waiting for your response uh, in the chat box. I'm really looking forward that you share your opinion. One hope, one fear. Write it down. I'm just going to say hi in the chat box. So I hope that everyone gets my message. So if you get this message, uh, you can always share a smiley with me. No worries over there. Okay. All right. So people understanding and fear of rejection. That is wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Dr. Welkin, thank you for sharing. Heal the world health. All right, wonderful. A direct message that I just received. We'll just spend around 20, 30 seconds or one minute on this. So I need to get your feedback. Uh, use the chat box. Write down your hope or fear. You can write it down in one word, one sentence. Fear of loneliness. Oh, that that's something very interesting. All right. Okay, go on, guys. Keep on writing. I'm still waiting for, for you to share your opinions in the chat box and I'll be sharing them as they come. All right. So let us proceed. So we need to firstly define leadership, but in the context of what the great people have to say about it. I'm not going to rely on the textbook definition of leadership. Uh, I'm going to give you an idea that what uh, successful people, effective people, people who have made a mark in this world, what do they have to say about the definition of leadership? Because this is going to give us all a context, an idea that 
Uh, leadership is not only about having a group of followers who need to follow you and you are doing things for them. That's just a, a tip of the iceberg. The leadership has got a multiple uh, dimensions or multiple aspects to it. So let us quickly go through these quotations. I have like few lined up on the screen. So effective leadership is not about making speeches or being live. Leadership is defined by results, not attributes. Uh, Peter Drucker, uh, one of the gurus of management, he talks about uh, organizational leadership and he says that it's not about your charisma only or your communication skill only. It is about the results. Very interesting point, I must admit. All right. The leadership is uh, not about, just let me put this up. Not about epic decisions. It is about choices that we make in our daily lives. This is something that really appeals to me because most of us, uh, we disassociate with the concept of leadership, just thinking that uh, I'm not in a position right now to lead anyone or anything. So why should I be worried about my leadership skills? This is something that we all need to understand that there is a leader in all of us and whatever we do in our daily lives, the small habits, the small attributes that we follow, uh, they are going to determine like getting up early in the morning, maybe, I'm just giving you an example, uh, setting up daily goals for you to achieve, uh, once achieving those goals, appreciating yourself on them. So basically your personality or your leadership style, it focuses on not doing something really big after five, 10 years. It's about doing small things on a daily basis. Uh, I really uh, like this. All right. So leadership is not about a title or a designation. It's impact, influence, and inspiration. Uh, we understand impact involves getting results. Influence is about spreading the passion and you have to inspire teammates. Fine, we do get, but this is the typical leadership definition. Robin Sharma, a very wonderful individual. You can find so much material and content on the internet. So Jim Ron says that the challenge of leadership is to be strong, but not rude, be kind, but not weak, be bold, but not bully. Very interesting. Have humor, but without folly. I'm going to share many things with you, but not going to go in the details of everything because you will be having these slides with you later on, and you can go through all these quotations in your spare time. This is going to give you a wonderful idea. Now, there are four ingredients in true leadership. Another thing that I really admire, uh, it's brains, soul, heart, and good nerves. I mean, I also believe that having strong nerves, having resilience, having consistency, having the ability to get back when you fall down, is something that is very critical when it comes to being a leader, regardless of the context. I mean, whether in organizational context or in personal life. So it is a combination of brain, soul, heart. I mean, by brain, we do understand it is about our intelligence. We need to work on that. Then there is a context of emotional intelligence. I believe that soul and heart relates to emotional intelligence. We already have a session on emotional intelligence. You can find the recording on uh, AIU's page. We've already covered that topic. So it's a combination of these three skills. Wonderful. So a leader is like a shepherd. He stays behind the flock, letting the most nimble go out ahead, uh, whereupon the others follow, not realizing that all along they are being directed from behind. Such a wonderful definition and given by Nelson Mandela. I mean, what better leader to have than Nelson Mandela? And he's saying that it is the leader who knows where we want to go, what we want to achieve. And it's not about telling the, uh, the followers or the people that what you need to do. It's about setting up a direction that they are automatically, they are doing it on their own without even realizing that there is a force that pushes them. It's such a wonderful, wonderful idea. I mean, when we talk about organizational context, uh, the good, the great leaders that who have been running their organizations, they set up an environment. They don't micromanage. They don't tell people what to do. They set up an environment in which people uh, they start outperforming. So it is, it it is the like the, one of the very interesting contexts of leadership. Wonderful. I mean, whatever comes to your mind, whatever opinion, whatever comment, please feel free to share that. 
chat box, uh, use the chat box. The role of a leader is not to come up with all the great ideas. Uh, the role of the leader is to create an environment in which great ideas can happen. It's uh, wonderful. This definition basically focuses on the shifting of burden from leaders towards everyone involved in the process. Usually we assume that leader is going to be a person who is going to tell us what to do. But this is not the case. This is not how leadership works. Although this is a part of leadership, but uh, leaders, they need to create an environment where people, they start sharing up their strengths, they start working on their abilities and they uh, collectively proceed. I'm giving you an example of an organizational context. You can relate it well with the environment of your home, your society, your country even. Okay. So this is, this is the, for me, this is my most important slide. That is why you are sh <laughs> seeing so many things on it. Okay. One of the most important leadership lesson is realizing that you are the most, you are not the most important or the most intelligent person in the room all the time. I mean, the leaders, they need to admit that there are going to be people who are going to be better than them, who are going to be more competent than them. And the best part about leadership is to understand, realize, and make full use of the potential of people that you have in your team. Since leadership and team management in an organizational context, they go hand in hand. So there are going to be many references because obviously a leader has a group of people working for him or her. So since we are talking about organizational context, uh, society context and country context, so I hope that you will be able to relate that uh, what is our main point. So before you are a leader, success is all about growing yourself. When you become a leader, success is all about growing others. Oh, such a wonderful, by Jack Welch, the CEO of Journal Electric, he says that you should be spending a lot of time on growing yourself. We did talk about growth mindset in our earlier lectures. Since these lectures that I've been giving to you, um, this is, I guess, the 10th or 12th session that we are having. So we have talked about self-development in multiple contexts. So I have talked about growth mindset a lot. So as an individual, wait for your opportunity to become a leader. But until then, you need to have a growth mindset and continue to uh, build upon your strengths. Because later on, when you become a leader, your top trait or value or uh, your top aspect would be to help grow others. So you understand that this leadership context is revolving largely around growing people, making sure that they realize and understand their true potential. It's not something internal. It has a external context as well. Uh, I think we are all right. We have one more. Leadership and learning are indispensable. So continuing with the growth mindset approach that all great leaders, they do not understand or imagine that their learning capacity is exhausted and they they know everything about their work, they know everything, uh, what is needed to be known. They continue to grow, they continue to learn. I, I also believe that learning is something that is a constant part of our lives, that should be a constant part of our lives. Even it is about the simplest things that we do. I mean, we we have been eating since the day we were born. All right, uh, but still we need to learn so many things about the different aspects of eating, like the nutritional aspect, or you know, we come across so many wonderful things happening when it comes to maintaining health or diet. People are talking about keto diet, people are talking about intermittent fasting and so on. And whenever I see these things, I think that the, 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 the world is evolving, that the people are evolving. They are just like, working on things which are quite obvious, but they are continuously making things better. So I think leadership is about learning and okay. So I hope that you did learn some new interesting aspects when it comes to sharing ideas regarding leadership. Feel free to share your comment in the chat box. Uh, I mean, this gives me a lot of encouragement when you give a positive feedback that you since we have been talking about uh, different aspects of leadership from the eyes and from the ideas of uh, global leaders. 
So if you have been able to learn something, you feel free to use the chat box. That is going to give me more uh, energy and <laughs> enthusiasm to continue. All right. So uh, before I actually talk about the leadership competencies, I would want to focus a bit on that a topic which uh, most of you may already be familiar with, but if not, please do have a look on this. You'll find so many wonderful YouTube videos on this. Uh, there is a lot of content. I can also share some PDFs with you, but uh, if you look at it on Google, you'll be able to find such wonderful information. The topic is seven habits of highly effective people. Stephen Covey is the, uh, author of this, a bestseller book. What he has done is that he has uh, worked on all the characteristics and traits of people who have been successful, effective, whether in political context, in social context, in organizational context, regardless of the uh, field which they are in, but they have been leaders. So he has summed up their top traits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go through all the traits one by one. And I want you guys to think about this in a way that are you doing these things in your life or not? And uh, if you are doing everything in this way, then you're, you're really wonderful. You're really great, which you already are. But if not, you would want to have a look at this content. Uh, go to Google and write down seven habits of highly effective people and you are going to find so much wonderful information on it. This should be your uh, bedtime story, I suggest. <laughs> I mean, you should be reading through this content throughout your day and you'll, you'll find so many wonderful things. So before I start, let me have a look on the chat box. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, good, good afternoon. Fine. So the first habit, that we all need to adapt in our lives in order to be effective is being proactive. Now, uh, how do we define being proactive? I mean, there are two approaches that we can follow. Either we can be reactive, like something has happened and then we react to it, or we can be proactive. Like we already start preparing and we are already prepared for the prospective things that can happen. Now, it's about taking charge of your life. Uh, this is very important. We do understand that uh, living in different parts of the world, we have our own restrictions, our own complications, and uh, our own set of things happening around us. But the idea is to have a sense of control over the things happening around you. And this idea is really interesting. It is related with managing stress as well as we did have a session a couple of weeks ago on stress management and it did, did talk a lot about the control factor. Being proactive means that you need to take charge of your life, the things happening around you, uh, if you are concerned about your health, rather than waiting that one day the doctor tells you that, God forbid something is wrong with you and then you start taking the medicine and then you start exercising and then you start making good choices. This should be the other way around. You should be proactive. Same goes for your career orientation. Same goes for everything that is happening for you. So having a proactive approach in determining your life choices, what you want to do, that is going to be really helpful. I'm just going to touch these habits because I wanted to give you an intro of this, but I would recommend that if you go through this content in detail later uh, in your spare time, fine. So we are done with the first habit, being proactive. We do have to get a very small idea what it is. Another thing is begin with end in mind. Uh, I mean, whatever you want to start, think about it, that where is it going to end? Uh, the, the author of this seven habits, it, uh, he gives a very interesting uh, reference to this uh, habit. He says that think about it in a way that you are, you're dead. God forbid, that think about it that you are dead and you are lying in your coffin and then there are people standing around you, your loved ones, your spouse, your children, your siblings, your, your teachers, uh, your neighbors and all the people who are there in your life and uh, think about it that what are they talking about? What are they saying about you? What is your spouse thinking that what kind of a husband, what kind of a wife were you? 
uh, what are your children thinking that what kind of a father or a mother were you? Same goes for your siblings. So it gives you an idea that the kind of approach or strategy that we need to follow in our life, it, it needs to be based around the end point that with the main goal, that what do we want to prove? Why are we here? What do we want to prove? So that is related with the end context, that the end in mind is that what is your ultimate goal? And align all your actions according to your goal. Whether it is <clears throat> regarding your society better, making your country better, running or setting up a business, whatever it is. So think about before starting, always think about the goal, the end, where you want to go. So this is the habit. You know, if we talk about Nelson Mandela, thinking about freedom and spending around more than, uh, I guess, around two decades, planning and executing all the things. So I think that great leaders, they do have this ability that they can look in the future and then they can align their daily actions accordingly. So this is one thing that we need to learn and how we are going to do that is going to be found in the content that you are going to look into after this session later on, <laughs> all right? The next habit, third habit is regarding prioritizing. Now I've already shared enough emphasis on this in our previous lectures that I think all successful people, what they do is they always prioritize Whenever they get up in the day, they know what is needed to be done first, uh, at the first priority. Prioritizing reduces your stress. Prioritizing makes you more effective. It makes you more productive. It gives you a sense of accomplishment, achievement. It helps you in managing time. I mean, prioritizing is one solution to many problems. So what is it? Either keep a mental journal of things or write down things, things to do. Uh, I would want to know if, if if any one of you uses your 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 fridge maybe or your table or your desk or your computer or your smartphone to have the priority system, like make a journal of things that what do you want to do, what is most important. The ability to determine that what is more important and what is less important, it makes you more effective. Uh, since I've been working in a professional organization, so at most times I, I think that the, the energy and the effort that I'm putting into some one thing is maybe wasting my time. So I need to prioritize and think accordingly. Okay, so this was just an example. The fourth habit is Always think win-win. I mean, all great leaders, they do not just think about winning and losing, like you win everything and everyone else loses. This is an approach that this world re needs right now. You know, this world is going to be a much better place if all of us start thinking about it in a way that win-win, that everybody gets something out of something. Uh, this win-win this approach is a whole concept in itself. But just to give you uh, an idea, it is about having an approach in which you're not like very cutthroat and you're not like focusing on getting everything and uh, making sure that you win all the time. The world and its resources have a lot to offer to everyone. So if, if we focus on this thing that everybody gets something, then firstly, our life is going to be very easy. And secondly, this is a trait of highly effective people because if you live for like 60, 70, 80 years, you cannot just win all the time. There are going to be phases where you are going to compromise, you're going to adjust. So in a, with, a, with a mindset or a context of win-win, you can always have that balance, okay? The next part is regarding communication skills and regard the next habit. Uh, we have talked about four habits. Uh, I want you guys to think about it that um, how many of you are following these habits because this 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 is a very interesting content and I really wanted to share in the leadership contest. I really wanted to share it with you. So the fifth habit is seek first to understand then to be understood. Uh, this is really wonderful. You know, when it comes to communication skills, usually we talk about, I'm just simplifying it for all of uh, you to understand. 
when it comes to communication skills uh, what we usually think is that communication is all about speaking yeah like your ability to speak convince and persuade other people is something called as communication skill this is not wrong this is right but this is like the half part of communication the remaining half or the more important half is to have active listening the communication is more about listening as well and not only listening active listening which means making an effort to understand you know in a, even in our lives uh, we spend our first 20 or 18 to 20 years of our lives in studying in learning in grasping the concepts that how this world works so the more effort we put into understanding something the more response are we going to generate later so seek first to understand then to be understood uh once you understand how the things how the systems how the world works only then you will be in a position uh the interpretation of this with the stories can go a long way but i am keeping a check on the time that we have today the next thing is about teamwork sixth point is about teamwork synergy you know 1 plus 1 equals 2 but in context of synergy 1 plus 1 equals 11 this means when you team up with like minded people when you team up with with people who share the same passion same energy you multiply your effort you cannot take on the world individually you have to build a team you have to be among people you have to synergize and it is an ability that is related to social intelligence and why am i talking about social intelligence we already have conducted a session on this earlier you will find it on the facebook page and the youtube channel of aiu the sessions that have been conducting they were in a series and everything was interrelated so teamwork synergy this is another important aspect if you are if you feel that you are really good working with people since i am a teacher and uh, i do talk about the psycho psychology aspect of uh, my students as well so when people when my students say that they are introverts you know we we have the idea that some people are introverts and some are extroverts some like keeping their ideas to themselves and some like sharing them so my opinion to them is that in order to be effective in this context you need to have an have a personality and ability to be well to gel in among other people to connect with other people you need to have the social intelligence because if you want to make an impact in your life i mean the 60 70 80 years that you have on this planet if you want to make an impact you can't do it on your own you have to synergize you have to find people all right so the last habit after i complete this seven habit thing i will ask you to write down your comments in the chat box and only then i will proceed because i really want to know that whether you were able to learn something from it or not do share one thing that you have learned from the idea of seven habits whatever one thing that you have learned or gained that you found more valuable and useful feel free to share that in the chat box because then i'll be knowing that uh, you are all ears you know when we are talking through screens i don't usually get the idea that whether the students are even listening or not so your feedback your input it gives me more encouragement and energy to carry on the seventh habit is something very important it's sharpening the saw we do under by the looks of it you know saw is used is a, is a tool used to cut trees so i guess it's about i think it's about maybe abraham lincoln or some other i think it's about abraham lincoln that somebody asked that if you have 8 hours 8 hours to cut down a tree how would you start so he replied that i will spend the first five or six hours on sharpening the saw and then i will use the next two hours to, to cut the tree can we relate this concept with our with our lives without preparation without
being ready without preparing it's going to take us a lot of time to make an impact so we should be spending a lot of time on learning the things on sharpening the saw the author gives a very interesting idea regarding working on your physical strength it gives four contexts physical social spiritual and you will learn these things when you go into the details so physically you need to prepare yourself for the challenges that are coming in your life and we do understand the challenges are always going to be there physically spiritually all right psychologically socially all these aspects we need to sharpen our saw sharpen our skills this one hour interaction right now is an opportunity for you to work on your skill set we are talking about leadership you have other classes you talk about other things so this one aspect is going to uh, help you understand i i would do request that please go through this content later on after after the session in your spare time so use the chat box right now and share at least one thing that you have learned from this seven habits of highly effective people so i get an idea that whether this was helpful or not uh do share one thing in the chat box there are some unread messages let me quickly go through them so one of you says i follow these habits very good uh uh it's very insightful good as a leader so dr welkin says as a leader i managed to implement the idea that what i do is never good and that i ought to become better every day which is about sharpening the saw wonderful that's that's the right whatever we do we can always do it better and i think our biggest challenge as dr welkin mentioned our biggest challenge every day is not to be better than somebody else it's to be better than we were yesterday i mean we ought to make mistakes you know whenever i whenever in the evening or in the night when i'm about to sleep i evaluate my day uh, i come across so many mistakes that i make daily and i think that i could have said this thing in a much better way i could have interacted with somebody in a much better way uh, i could have, i should have done this i should have done that so for the next day i try to plan that i'm going to be better and this this needs to happen on a frequent basis uh important thing i learned is that reality depends on perspective and leadership can come from seeing a unique perspective in each person very good true mal synergy helps us to be able wonderful very good thank you so much for sharing you know this this sharing of ideas it gives me the energy the motivation to continue <laughs> my presentation uh another another 30 second activity uh, if you think about a bad leader i mean just close your eyes and visualize a bad leader what makes a leader bad write one word in the chat box i mean since you are familiar with how the chat box works now how would you describe bad leadership i just want to get an idea so that next 20 25 minute discussion is based around the ideas that you have shared maybe it's the ego maybe it's a uh, bad attitude maybe it's a lack of uh, trust no well, i'm putting on so many things in for you snobbish very good somebody who okay snobs you who's a poor planner very good now the chat box is really oh my god the chat box is really flooding with <laughs> direct messages who is super convinced that he or she is better than the other oh my god oh there are so many messages coming wonderful i think you liked this slide a lot uh poor communication fails to give credit superiority complex poor planning yeah exactly so so whatever you have written right now whatever i have said right now please make sure that you do not end up having these attributes <laughs> this is your another lesson for lack of respect true i think care respect i find it very valuable and people they feel inspired they feel motivated to work when this is there okay wonderful very good so th that is why i wish that all these messages are visible to uh, the rest of the students so at least they know that what we are talking about but since uh, we will be work the admin will be working on that later okay 
So what we are going to do is, uh, in, the, in this part of our presentation, I'm going to talk about the top qualities of a great leader of excellence, achieving excellence, what to do. And you can always relate it with your ideas, uh, yourself, and uh, you will find, interestingly, you will find that you are not very far from becoming a great leader. It's something that you already know. I'm just helping you to recall uh, and just start implementing it in your life. The first and foremost thing is communication skills. I mean, communication skills, we do understand that I've already said it's not about your verbal expression only. It's about listening. Very importantly, it is about complimenting, appreciating. And what I'm going to do is I have uh, blended the other attributes of leadership in, in compliments. How many of you just ask yourself, you don't need to respond it in the chat box. Just ask yourself that, uh, have you been giving compliments recently to your team workers, to your co-workers, when you see somebody, even in your family, if you see, if you see your sibling doing something wonderful, uh, do you, do you easily share the compliment or would you want to hold on to that thought in your head and just appreciate them in your mind? That is not good. You know, appreciation, encouragement, it goes a long way. So I believe that as since I'm a teacher as well, and teacher is like <laughs> somehow like a leader. So when, when we as teachers, we appreciate and encourage and compliment our students, their energy, their morale, it just boosts and skyrockets. So communication skill, apart from the obvious regarding having good expression and using words, it's about having other attributes as well. Now, in an organizational context, uh, so having an idea of uh, setting up meetings, set, laying down the agendas, making sure that everyone is aware of the agenda and everyone is following that. These are the skills that one needs to learn. Each and everything is, is a topic in itself. But the important thing is once you have an idea that these are the things that I need to learn, you can start working on them. Positive verbal and nonverbal communication. I mean, we do want, I think we are going to talk about it later in these slides as well, but a leader needs to be very positive about everything because people, they look up to the leaders when it comes to challenges. So if as an individual, if, if you usually are negative, if you are usually are skeptical about the things that are happening around you and you talk less about hope, then you need to work on that because communication skill embedded with positivity is something. Uh, similarly, online communication is something that has been of very much importance recently. Since one of the examples is something that we are doing right now. Uh, the other thing is regarding emails or even I, I suggest that people are making, there's a concept of influencer, like people who are using social media to make this world a better place. I believe those social media influencers are, are leaders in their own capacities because they are they are they have their own set of followers <laughs> in millions and they are sending a message to this world. And that is an, another debate that whether this message that message is good or not, but this is how leadership works. So another attribute or quality of a great leader would be, and we all need to remember this is commitment and passion something very obvious uh, but since one of our five hours that we discussed in the start is recall remember refresh so do understand that whatever you do do it with full passion um, in a professional context we see people working i mean everybody works everyone most of us, like most of us, they end up doing something. They end up getting a job. They end up earning some livelihood. Most of us, we end up getting married, having kids. I mean, these are the steps of our lives that we go through. Ask yourself that, are you doing all these things with passion, with commitment? The people who are working, who are already in, employed, do you find that commitment and passion in your work? This is very important, very critical. If not, start working on it. Start thinking on it in a way that that is very important because the leaders 
who are disassociated with their work, who are disassociated with the things that they are saying, the followers, they tend to lose the trust. <laughs> it's pretty simple. If, if you believe in something, and once you believe in that, it reflects in your actions, it surrounds you with that commitment and passion, only then your followers or, or the people around you would want to think that you truly believe that this thing is worth doing. Otherwise, passion, it creates, produces energy. This is the main source of inspiration. I mean, leadership, top great leaders, they have this something in, in something we maybe call as charisma, but charisma is not something that is related with having a blue eyes or long hair or like a physically fit body. <laughs> it is reflected in the habits in the attributes. So this attribute that we need to learn is about ha having a sense of commitment to the cause. When, when you are committed to something, you are bound to face challenges and you, you, you may face failures, but strong leaders, great leaders. You know, Elon Musk right now, although a very a figure who is like liked by many and not liked by many, but in a business world, Elon Musk is one of the top leaders right now. And uh, he planned this in his uh, company SpaceX. He wanted to send a rocket to Mars and they planned for it for like five, six, seven years. And uh, he boasted about it on, on the internet, on social media, and like telling everyone that I'm sending a rocket to the space, I'm sending a rocket to space. You know, the first launch of their rocket, which was being broadcasted all over different channels in the world, it was a failure. The rocket just launched and it exploded. It was a failure. The resilience that these people have, the leaders who have, the, the commitment that they have, they don't give up. They just try Try, try again. And I believe that this is something that makes them great leaders. This is something that we can call as commitment and passion. That even if you fail, you keep on doing it. So ask yourself that, I mean, obviously you are the best judge of your own life. So you need to ask yourself that what is your level of commitment and passion, but regardless of the different uh professional context or the context may, may vary. All right. Uh, great leaders, they, they have clarity. Something that we need to learn is that we need to be clear what we want to do with our lives. We need to be clear where we want to go. We don't need to be like confused and double-minded about things that are happening. Clarity of vision and purpose is something that top leaders they possess. And this, this gives them confidence as well. This reflects into their commitment and passion as well. This gives, uh, I mean, you know, in an organizational context, uh, only the top management, the top leaders know where they want to be in next five, 10 years. I'll just give an example of something that I witnessed. I, I'm not sure how relevant it would be for you uh, depending upon your environment, but I'll quickly go through it. I was attending uh, a session. There is a company called as Zong in Pakistan. It's a Chinese telecom company, a very leading, it has huge market share in Pakistan. So I was once attending a session in which the top management of Zong from China was there. And they they were talking about their vision of uh, setting up multiple things, uh, working on the 5G technology and internet facility and improving on the telecom structure. And the CEO was constantly saying, our short-term, short-term goal, short-term goal, short-term goal is. So when, when we hear the word short-term, we believe that it's about six months, eight months. This is what short-term is. So the person who was taking the interview, he asked that manager, that CEO, what do you mean by short term? Like if you want to do all these things in short term, what do you mean by that? So he said, okay, in, in next 20, 30 years, we plan to do these things. We, so this shows that they are planning for a century. <laughs> I mean, how amazing is that? That they are planning, they are actually planning 
for 100 years to come where they want to see their businesses where they want to see their organizations this this ability where does it come from leaders when they study when they learn when they have the ability to excel when they have the ability to understand about things they are the ones telling the people that where we want to be after so many years okay understanding and knowing that who are we uh i just skipped the part of self leadership today because we have already talked about it so i i do encourage everyone to regularly remind yourselves or ask yourselves that who are you what are you doing <laughs> why are we here and why are we doing it and how can i contribute in this you see in order to build clarity of vision and purpose to be a great leader in future you need to understand why the things are happening how they are going to work and that only comes with interest with passion with commitment with putting in an effort it's not going to be something that is coming there are people they usually say that somebody is a born leader i don't believe in this thing people are not born leaders the leadership is is a skill it is something that we can learn we can adapt it's not something that god has given us it is something that we can always learn so another attribute of a great leader is you need to ask yourself this question that are you honest with yourself with people around you do you find honesty to be your core value i'm not the one to judge i'm just asking you to evaluate yourself do you believe that honesty is your core value that you would you would give up things you would give up valuable things but you would want to stay honest because that builds on your integrity and leaders with integrity only they can lead with integrity if if people they lose trust in their leaders then lead, leader is none so in order to build that right now understand that finding ways to do things which 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 fall under the topic of cheating never to do it always do the right things ah uh, it's easier said than done but this is what we need to learn uh, as a leader as a future great leader we should believe in setting up standards that that the others should be following keeping up the promises so honesty and integrity is something that is critical i mean i have seen this in our political leaders uh, not the leaders who are who are racing for a position to gain a political position but in 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 those leaders who have started revolutions without having the greed of getting a certain position who have started a revolution we have examples in china we have in south africa we have our religious examples as well the people who have started revolutions who have motivated encouraged the people to go with them this is one of their top traits never ever undermine the value of confidence i believe confidence is appealing i believe confidence the world runs on confidence i mean believe in yourself do understand that your ideas are valuable you matter your opinions matter your strengths matter just look at the picture that all of us are like this but in our minds we should be superheroes just recall the first slide that i showed where my name was written and i showed a picture of a superhero because we all need to make an impact in this world and we can't do it if we are not confident on ourselves even we can't do it so this is something very interesting very quickly i'll touch it that the confidence has three major levels uh, one is low confidence uh in a, in a normal context as a human being if you if you believe that 
you're not good enough your ideas are not good enough and people that generally bully you they bulldoze your opinions and you they just get away with everything people and you are just like on the submissive side then it is low confidence not good the other extreme is overconfidence equally bad if there is high ego if the leader believes that i am ultimate i know everything and the other people are just dumb people and if as an individual you believe that whatever you know is much 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 better than every everyone else that is overconfidence we need to avoid low confidence and overconfidence there is something called as reasonable confidence reasonable confidence is something that you believe on your strengths and you are aware of your weaknesses as well in overconfidence you are not aware of your weaknesses in low confidence you are not aware of your strengths <laughs> so in order to have rational or reasonable confidence you need to be aware of your strengths and your weaknesses because you know that you will be working on them because once you have to make a decision on behalf of so many people if you, if you end up working in an organization and you are the ceo eventually the burden of decision making would be on you so if you feel confident that this is the future that i see this is where we want to go and if this that confidence is based upon reason rational only then it would be <clears throat> appropriate so i think we are moving towards the end of our so since we were talking about decision making if you find it troubling for yourselves to make decisions in your daily lives if you find it challenging to take decisions if you don't have the foresight ability if acha if you're not able to adapt to uncertainty this is something really important and critical but understanding that uncertainty is going to be there always i mean you can plan all you want but plan a needs to have a plan b needs to have a plan c you would want to take charge of everything that is happening around you and you would want to make sure that the big companies the successful companies the organizations who are having a huge market share they, they reduce uncertainty they cannot eliminate it but they reduce it and how they reduce it through proper planning through proper homework market research okay so do understand that uncertainty or change is going to be a, a regular thing in your life the important thing is that how you react how you respond to that uncertainty or change we we have do understand that there is a concept called as think out of the box i'm sure that you guys may have heard about it i'm saying there is no box <laughs> okay just use all your thinking patterns in in whatever way you want to think use all your abilities be innovative be creative but just be a doer rather than being a thinker be a doer all right so even even in our history you know we do admire and acknowledge the leaders who have made mistakes you know and think about changes khan we think about alexander the great whatever they have i mean they have done so many wonderful things but they have made mistakes as well so accepting those mistakes and, and when once they accept their people accept as well because decision making making decisions is more critical another important aspect is uh, delegation and empowerment great leaders they do understand the true potential of people around them they delegate the responsibility accordingly they do know that when to use which people and which places take an example of sports uh, the captains or skippers of um, football teams they know when to use which player in which position another trait is emotional intelligence i have talked about it earlier but just to give you a quick overview 
it's going to be about you understanding and knowing your emotions understanding and knowing the emotions of people around you regulating yourself keep continuing to motivate yourself and understanding that you are a human being you're not a robot you're not a machine you're a human being human beings are complex they have their certain emotions feelings how to use those emotions how to tap those feelings into converting yourself into an effective individual achieving your goals setting up your priority system achieving what you want in life how is it going to help you become a good leader one of the most important aspects the aspect of care in continuation of emotional intelligence great leaders they have a sense of empathy for their employees for themselves even for for the employees do understand that people people they genuinely admire appreciate the sense of care and empathy in order to be a high achiever it's not like important that you are very rigid and very stiff and you are not concerned about the emotions of people it's the other way around particularly in the times of covid in the times of uh, this pandemic the world has seen that organizations are required to have the sen sense of empathy because small things matter the leaders who notice if you want to be a good father if you want to be a good mother notice the small things that your family does for you do not expect them to like, change the world and then you are going to clap for them clap for the small things that they do on a daily basis invest respect and expect i've given you so many wonderful things to think about today to understand that it is our obligation to make this world a better place we all have an obligation regardless of where we are right now what we are doing with our lives right now we are bound to do great things so let us all do our own great things by being a doctor by being an engineer by being an educationist by being a good father by being a good mother